Ladies and gentlemen, you can find our next performer at VeryFunnyLady.com. Please welcome to the stage, comedian Leanne Lord. Y'all could do a little bit better than that, right? Oh my gosh, you guys, can you do me a favor? Big round of applause for Tracy and Ian for coming up here. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I, I, quick question, how many, did you, were some of you here last year? Round of applause, anybody see me last year? Okay, awesome, awesome, same shit. <laughs> so we're good, oh my god. I, I can tell you guys with absolutely no exaggeration, Dragon Con, is my happy place. Yeah. Here, here's the thing though, every year that I come down here, I, I have the same problem. Um, I, I try to explain this to my muggle friends. Um, Cause I, I am Ravenclaw, I'm Ravenclaw, everybody. And yeah, I'll get to all of you. I will get to all of you. If you've seen my show, you know I'm gonna get to you. Here's the thing, so I am Ravenclaw and I do have muggle friends because you know, diversity. Uh, <laughs> and they ask me the same questions. They're like, oh my God, what's Dragon Con? Is that like Comic Con, like with dragons? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes it is. But this Dragon Con, I, this is the place that you can just be nerdy. Right, this is big tent nerdy for us. This is where, this is nerd nirvana. All right, so that said everybody, welcome home. Oh my God, I, uh, I, this is so much like Comic-Con on steroids for me. This is so awesome. Um, I will say I have, a, I have a lot to get through on this show, but I, I feel comfortable here uh, and and, I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Someone reached out to me uh, on Twitter and they said, hey Leanne, on a scale of one to 10, how much of a blurred are you? Now, I'm assuming most of you know what, uh, hey, 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 we're gonna be all right, we're gonna be all right, we get we're gonna get there. I'm assuming most of you know what a blurred is. Okay. And if you don't, that's okay, I'm gonna explain it. Uh, <laughs> Blurred is the combination of the words black and nerd. Blurred. That's how I know I'm a blurred and not a geek, right? Because that would be bleak. <laughs> and while that's how I've been feeling since the election, you know. <sighs> yeah, you know, uh, be best, so. <laughs> But somebody reached out to me and they said, okay, Leanne, on a scale of one to 10, how much of a blurred are you? And I gave the only answer possible. Uh, I said 42. <laughs> which, which, which reminds me, man, I, um, one of the favorite costumes that I've seen, cosplays I've seen here, uh, there was a woman, I don't know if you guys caught her. She, uh, she had a, a bowl of petunias on her shoulder with a little sign that said, oh no, <laughs> not again. <laughs> that joke only works here. <laughs> but that is so one of the things I love about Dragon Con, the cosplay here is like on 100. Right, folks come here and they take it seriously. Like you, you actually kind of stand out if you come here and you're not in costume, right? Like I, I came as myself and like nobody recognized me. <laughs> it's very hurtful. Um, but you, <laughs> you'll see like so many, so many cosplays here that I, I, I really enjoy. But <sighs> some of y'all, okay, well let, let me start with the positive. <laughs> some of y'all are wearing these costumes so easy so casual, I'm like, you wear that to work every day, don't you? <laughs> like, I saw one dude, I don't know if it was a dude or a woman, I couldn't tell, he was actually dressed as a predator, 
And I thought, what if he's really a predator? <laughs> like, we just got got. <laughs> and I, and then, then there are other folks. I, I, I don't know, have you seen that? I've seen a lot of dudes uh, walking around here in bathrobes <laughs> pretending they are author dent. <laughs> And I'm like, no, you lazy bastard, I see you. <laughs> you didn't want to put on a costume. <laughs> your ass rolled out of bed in your bathrobe. <laughs> I'm not fooled, oh my God. You will, you will see costumes here and you, you gotta be open, right? Like I, I have seen quite a few out of shape superheroes. <laughs> And it's, I, I had to catch myself, because at first I was like, Batman? <laughs> oh my God, did you eat Robin? <laughs> what is happening? Oh my God, I, I, I will admit, I don't always catch everything. Like, there, there are some mashups that I don't get. Do you know what I mean, the costume mashup? Because there's a lot going on, right? Like, there's, there's, there's glitter, and there are piercings, and there's plastic, and there's metal work, and I'm trying to figure it out, and after a while I'm like, oh, that's not a costume. <laughs> you just fucked up. <laughs> but this is the place to be that. <laughs> so welcome to Dragon Con. <laughs> Oh man, I, I will tell you the best one I've seen, best one I've seen, uh, there was this girl uh, with a broken leg on crutches. And I'm like, bitch, you broke your leg just to be a Dragon Con? <laughs> that is like the best commitment, that's commitment. You keep hopping along, girl, you keep hopping along. Save yourself some time, man. I, uh, I will say my, um, my favorite place um, in all of Dragon Con to be, and if you haven't been, whew, the Dealer's Mart. Y'all, yes. you, you go to the Dealer's Mart and you see stuff you didn't know you needed, <laughs> but now you absolutely have to have, right? Like last year I walked in, I'm like, is that a tiara? I need a tiara. So I bought a tiara. <laughs> And I wear it at home, around the house, so everybody knows that I am the queen of the castle. Which is awkward, because I live alone. <laughs> but honestly, I was feeling a little bit overdressed wearing it at the supermarket. <laughs> People are so judgy. Um, here's the thing though, absolutely no problem wearing my tiara at the Apple store. <laughs> They just think you're queen of the genius bar. <laughs> like, yes, I am. Oh my god. But I would say, if you have not been uh, over to the over to the mart, don't go alone. Go with a buddy. Have an exit strategy. Because otherwise, otherwise, it just gets real. It gets really weird, right? I got heard one dude. He was like really intense and excited, and he was like, "Oh man." I need some fake elf ears. <laughs> and I want to go, boo, um, they're all fake. <laughs> but I was, I was wearing a tiara at the time, so. <laughs> thought my credibility was a little sketchy. <laughs> I, uh, I heard one dude real quiet, like serial killer quiet. He was like, I need a sword. <laughs> okay, and he was not dressed like as a, as a police officer or samurai or like nothing like that. And so he just, he regular dude, like jeans and a t-shirt, which is already weird at Dragon Con. <laughs> so I felt like I needed to ask questions. Like I wanted to just sidle up and go, um, excuse me, sir, uh, are you a Highlander? <laughs> are you, are you about to be on the Night's Watch? Like, cause, cause, cause 
if you're about to take the black and walk the wall, hell yeah, you need a sword. <laughs> if you have a regular nine to five, you don't need a sword. You need a bat lift. <laughs> so we can cut down on these unnecessary staff meetings. <laughs> uh, I guess my people are in the room. Star Trek fans, Star Trek. <laughs> Original series. Uh, well, you know, before I go any further, y'all peep the shirt? Y'all checking this out? Is this a mind fuck or what? <laughs> I'm trying to piss everybody off. Yeah, but I, here's the thing, man, Star Trek, I don't, I don't know if I'm a nerd because I watch Star Trek or if watching Star Trek made me a nerd. <laughs> All I know is that that was my point of entry. That's how I got here, right? And, and I will tell you, my, the first Trekkie in my life was my mom. Okay. Yes, my mom was the first Trekkie for me. We used to watch the reruns together. Um, she got me my first, um, my first uniform, and Lieutenant Uhura, of course. Oh my God. We went to our first, um, our first convention, for Star Trek convention together. Uh, we got hit on by a couple of Klingons. Um, um, well, uh, next generation female Klingons. Uh, so yeah, hashtag us too. Uh, you don't turn that down. <laughs> but I, uh, I just, don't disrespect anything else because it was my first. I love, love Star Trek. Like so much so that I'm not even a comic that does impressions, but I can do a triple like. <laughs> like that's my thing. And, 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 I, and I love almost all the incarnations of Star Trek. Um, next Gen, Next Generation fans, Next Generation. <sighs> oh my God, I still think Jean-Luc Picard is the sexiest captain ever. He, oh, is he now? Mmm, I just got moist. What? <laughs> I said that out loud, didn't I? <laughs> and we are recording, oh my goodness. <laughs> but I, I do love him, man. I mean, how do you not? He's British, he's bald. He's bald, he's British. That's all you need. That's all I need. You know what, because of him, I think my stripper name would be Earl Grey Hot. Like, let's be. <laughs> DS9, Deep Space Nine fans, Deep Space Nine. Oh my God, I love me some Avery books. Captain Cisco. Does that sound like a drink you can order? I'll have Captain Cisco on the rocks, please. Oh no, 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 belay that order. Straight up. <laughs> Oh my God, he's a dog, I, and I, I, love, I love that character and I love the actor. Like, I loved him in uh, uh, Spencer for Hire, um, A Man Called Hawk. Like, I don't even care that nobody under, under 40 knows what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I love him so much that I don't even care that he has a restraining order out on me. Um, <laughs> because you guys know, true love forgives. True love forgives, <laughs> so we're fine. Um, Voyager, Voyager fans, Voyager fans. I, I gotta tell you, I had a little issue with Voyager. And I, I think y'all understand what it is. Um, first female captain in the franchise, and she gets lost? A real woman would have stopped and asked for directions before the first commercial break. That would have been the shortest thing in ever. Oh my God. Um, but I do, I do, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it very much. Um, Enterprise? Yeah. Really? <laughs> okay, all right. Transparency, transparency. I'll be honest with you guys. Um, I really tried. <laughs> I really tried. I, 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 I was in my seat, first season, first episode. I turn it on, and they're singing. 
in the opening credits. I turned that shit off. I'm like, there's no singing in Star Trek. Okay, unless it's Spock singing Bitter Dregs, I don't wanna hear it. That was for my original series fans, original series fans. Oh my God, Ah, Bitter Dregs. <laughs> All right, y'all know I gotta talk about the new one. Oh. Star Trek Discovery. Mm, considerably less enthusiasm here. Okay, okay. Y'all remember the movie Spartacus? There was a scene in Spartacus where one by one, the guys stand up and they go, I'm Spartacus. I am Michael Burnham. Okay, Th listen, from my heart, you guys, I've always been a cis hetero Vulcan of color. <laughs> that is how I identify. Why would I not want to be a black? Why would I not want Sarah to be my father? <laughs> Y'all are not feeling me on this Vulcan tip. I'm just saying. I will tell you one of my main problems, though, with Discovery. Um, it's not like Next Gen. It's not like DS9 in the fact that you can never call it by its initials, because Star Trek Discovery is STD. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody wants that. Uh, Star Wars fans, are y'all all these things are mutually exclusive. I don't understand any rivalry between Star Trek and Star Wars fans, okay? I think if we could just all come together on the fact that we all had lonely childhoods, <laughs> we would be fine. <laughs> I, I will confess that I am an old school Star Wars fan. Like, I don't understand episode four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. What are we, what are we doing? Um, no, there is one, two, and three, and then negative everything else. Because I, I, will, I will confess, and maybe, maybe Star Wars fans can help me out. I'm willing to have y'all buy me a drink at the bar to talk this out. Um, but I have questions. They're just things I don't understand right now. The franchise confuses me. Um, is BB-8 the Star Wars version of Scrappy-Doo? Is that? Because I feel like I'm betraying R2-D2 at this point. Um, the Stormtrooper uniforms are so pristine. Like what, what is the Empire paying for dry cleaning? Are they using Clorox? Or is that the real power of the dark side? I don't... <laughs> and, and speaking of the dark side, um, what's up with the racism? <laughs> Here's my thing. A long time ago, um, in a galaxy far, far away, um, they didn't have tiki torches, so... <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> Thank you, I'll take that. I, listen, I'm completely comfortable making y'all laugh one at a time. Um, <laughs> I'm fine with that. Y'all ain't gonna get this nerdy shit nowhere else. Oh my God. Um, I did see um, The Last Jedi. Last Jedi as well. Okay. And I, I actually thought the parts that I was awake for were very good. Um, if y'all want to break out in a fist fight right now, and then we just come on back, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Um, but I, I got distracted in the movie a lot. Like, Kylo Ren, to me, looked a lot like a young Professor Snape. Oh my God. And then, I, I hope I'm 
remembering this correctly, but there, he had this like vision, dream, impression that, um, that Luke was trying to smother him in his sleep. Now, in Luke's defense, what parent of a, of a teenager has not seen the dark side growing in their kid and just wanted to, ah! Just fix it. <laughs> I think my favorite scene, my favorite scene um, in, in that movie was when Kylo just went nuts and like blew, uh, blew Luke to pieces. Like just, yeah, like the gun scene, the gun scene, and then, then the smoke clears. And then, and then Luke is just standing there like, yeah, bitch, what? <laughs> Oh my God, y'all could have could have had that in the movie. That's all we needed. <laughs> but there are, I, I, I assume because it's Disney now, that there will be a lot more um, movies um, in the Star Wars franchise. And there are, there are some movies that I'd like to see made. I actually uh, have a list of my like top three. Um, like I'd like to see Jedi versus Alien versus Predator. <laughs> right? I would like to see that. Um, I would like to see um, Sharknado, uh, Jedi Sharknado, uh, may the fish be with you. Uh, okay, okay, not so much. Um, so much. Okay, how about this one, how about this one? So long, and thanks for all the Jedi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so foolish, I'm so foolish. I, I think, for me, it, again, I like both, I'm not gonna argue, um, until I have a fireball. Um, <laughs> thank you. Don't tease me. <laughs> I think the thing I like about Star Trek the most is that they actually have the prime directive, right? That's a, that's a, a policy of non-interference with um, cultures or civilizations that are not as advanced. And they don't always abide by it, but at least they have it, right? <laughs> Unlike Stargate SG-1, yo, they be popping through that gate, no invitation, right? No, no, inv done. They just come through like, hello, primitive peoples. We are here to study you. Oh my God, we've killed them all. All right, everybody, back through the gates. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> if you guys, if any of you have been following me um, on social media, um, please, please get a life. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. If you've been following me, then you know um, I have been watching Babylon 5. Okay, that was exactly the amount of response that I deserved. Um, Cause listen here, look, here. If, if watching Babylon 5 Season one is not a labor of love. <laughs> I don't know what is. Okay, I and, and and everybody who loves Babylon Five was like, "Oh, girl, you listen. Just watch season one. Just get through it. Everything else will be fine." <laughs> Where have I heard that advice before? <laughs> hey, girl, listen. Just kiss all these frogs, and one day you're gonna get your prince or mononucleosis. <laughs> but I did it, you guys. I got through season one, Babylon 5. I feel like my nerd street cred is on 10. I even tweeted at J. Michael Straczynski and he tweeted back, what? Oh my God, I'm feeling important. <laughs> But I am, uh, I'm, in, I'm in season three. I'm in season three now, and this is supposedly the good year. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it actually is, it actually is. And if you guys, if y'all know the show, I really feel like seasons two and three, the episode titles should all be like, really, Londo? For real, Londo? Oh, come on, Londo. Ah, oh, what the fuck, Londo? Oh, wait. Is it, can, listen, he had the funniest lines 
right? Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember my favorite one now. Like, how can I help you, moon-faced assassin of joy? Oh my God, <laughs> I'm screwed it up. But he is, uh, he's one of my favorite characters on the show. Um, although I will, I, 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 I retract that. Um, I think the best quote of the show was, Ivanova is God. <laughs> or not, okay. <laughs> And like, people are giving me shit though. They're like, how are you just now catching up on Babylon 5? And that's cause it came out around the same time as DS9, right? Yeah, exactly. And nine is more than five, so. <laughs> that explains that, oh my God. Um, I was all in from the beginning though on uh, Battlestar Galactica. Got it. Now, I even, I even remember the original. The original was so cool, right? Launch, Colonial Viper 1. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I've never seen a reboot quite like Battlestar, right? The, the Cylons were just completely transformed, man. They went from tin cans to supermodels. <laughs> like, I wasn't rooting for the humans. <laughs> just wasn't. And I will put um, Commander Adama in the sexy captains category. Like, mm, thank you, one person. Shoot, my captain, my captain. Whatever. I'll say I was in for the whole series. I, I cried when the series ended. Um, not because it was over, but because I thought it could have had a way better ending. <laughs> my God, what a waste. Um, I do think though, for great endings, uh, nothing beats Serenity. Serenity had the jo yeah. Joss Whedon was on his game, right? And he, okay, here's what's weird. Here's what's weird for me about Serenity. Um, please don't be mad. I hated Firefly. Whoa. I know, I know, I know. Okay, okay. Let me put it into context for you, though. If y'all remember, when he was doing Firefly, it took him away from season six and seven of, uh, seven of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Okay, okay, and I was hot, I was hot, because I love me some Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And, and here's the thing, I didn't think I would. I didn't think the TV show could be as good as the movie, yes. right? Yes. I tuned in to mock it. <laughs> Seven years later. <laughs> Yes, thank you, thank you. Well, here's my thing, here's my thing. Um, I, 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 I did love it, I did love it. I was in there for, for all of the loves. Um, uh, Team Angel, Team Angel, anybody? Oh, Team Riley? No. Exactly, exactly. What, what, wait a minute, wait a minute, what about um, Spike. Team Spike? Oh! How do we not love Blondie Bear? I may be love's bitch, but at least I'm man enough to admit it. Oh. Love me some him. I will say though, I sometimes, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a problem separating the actor from their character. So I have never seen an episode of Bones. Love David Boreanaz, but I was like, dude, you're angel. You're a vampire. Get your shit together. Go marry Buffy. <laughs> oh, this medical bullshit is. Oh my god. <laughs> Actually, no, that was also my problem uh, with Jessica Jones. Right? Season one. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Give, give me a chance. Give me a chance. Here was my problem though. It wasn't her, it was with her nemesis. David Tennant. The whole season, I'm like, you can't be evil. <laughs> You're Doctor Who. He was evil in Harry Potter? No, no, no. Let's go this one genre at a time. <laughs> but, here, but here's my thing, here's my thing. Um, to me, he wasn't just any doctor. He was my doctor. Right? He was the doctor I started with. My first, my entree into Doctor Who was the Blink episode. Oh. Right, you see these eyes? <laughs> that was me for a week. <laughs> I 
love that series, man. I just had a hard time. But I, I will say, um, season one of Jessica Jones for me was very instructive. Woo! Yes, right? Like, I learned that sometimes crackheads can be good neighbors. <laughs> And you really can make it through life in one pair of jeans. You can, <laughs> you can do that. You can do that. God. God. I, I will say, I will, and, and for my comic book fans, um, j just again, transparency, comic books are my blind side. Like, I didn't, I didn't grow up reading comic books. I don't even think I've ever read a comic book, but I will go to the movies. Like, I saw Avengers Infinity War. It was very upsetting. Yeah, I called my therapist, but she had seen it too. So we both crying on the phone. Like, where did they go? Are they coming back? Damn you, Thanos! It's very upsetting. Um, I saw, um, oh, of course I saw Thor Ragnarok. Um, okay, okay. Yes, it was good. Yes, it was funny, but um, I'm team hella. Okay, you understand, you understand. Okay, this is, this is Thor and Loki's older sister. She put in the work. Okay, she did the deed and then got cut out of the deal? I was like, yeah, bitch, Ragnarok, burn it down. Burn this motherfucker down. Yes. I'm like, ha ha, your hammer, whatever, dude. <laughs> oh my God. I guess that's why I loved Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman was really good. <laughs> oh my God. I'm really looking forward to the next movie where she fights American homegrown Nazis. That's gonna be. <laughs> oh my God. It's really good. Oh my God. I, uh, I've seen, I guess I've seen most of the Spider Mans. Um, I just don't understand why it's the amazing. Spider-Man, like, why does he need an adjective, <laughs> right? It's just, it's just Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, the amazing Spider-Man, like, mm, what you trying to cover up, son? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sure you know today uh, is a very special day. I was, uh, I, I was very lucky. I got a chance to moderate the um, Science of Wakanda panel. <laughs> And before that, uh, there was the Black Panther photo shoot. Oh, it was. Oh my God. And, and at this point, at this point, it's not about whether or not you have seen Black Panther. It is about how many times you have seen Black Panther. Um, I will give them my money all day, every day. Um, Cause I love, I, listen, if y'all thought I was uppity before, <laughs> This is a new kind of uppity that's on 10, oh my God. I love that movie so much that it actually made me go back and watch Captain America Civil War, which incidentally is not about the Civil War. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be an alternate timeline where superheroes were freeing slaves. <laughs> right? Cause listen, if we could have Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, we could have that. But I, um, I saw Black Panther, um, it was opening weekend. Of course, of course. But I did the extra step. I saw it in the hood. Cause I thought that was appropriate. And I gotta tell you, uh, I haven't seen that many happy black people in one place since election day 2008. Are we voting? <laughs> oh my God, is this the Obama T'Challa ticket? <laughs> oh my God, T'Challa Obama. I oh love it. And I, okay, so opening weekend, opening weekend in the hood, I saw it on Sunday. The theater was packed. Like apparently nobody went to church that day. 
I was like, ooh, I hope this is a trend. <laughs> but even the preacher was like, yeah, I'm sorry, Jesus. It's, uh, it's Black Panther. <laughs> Oh, man. And now, now, here's what was special about seeing it in the hood. Um, a lot of folks that came to see Black Panther in the theater that weekend, not necessarily superhero, comic book, Marvel fans. They were just coming because this was an event. This was Black Panther, yeah. right? So when the movie ended, some of the people, a lot of people got up to leave. Oh. So there was this really beautiful black community, black nerd moment where all the black nerds in the audience were like, hold up, fam. Wait, there's more. And they were like, word? And we were like, word. Such a beautiful moment, oh my God. And I will, I will tell you one of the, there's so much that I think we all got out of that movie, but I think one of the most important is that now we, uh, we are barking at white people. Um, <laughs> yes, ho, ho. Yes, be silent, colonizer. Because M'Baku, listen, no disrespect to T'Challa, but M'Baku's my dude. Mm. I think Wepa is, uh, is Wakanda for how you doing? <laughs> I could take that all day, every day. But oh well, we doing good on movies. Oh my God, did y'all saw, saw Get Out, yes? yes? That movie changed my life. It did, no, seriously. Like when I drink with white people now, it's out of styrofoam cups. Styrofoam. It can't be nothing that make a noise. You're not gonna send me to the sunken place. We're not doing that. Not doing that, man. That movie had a very, I guess, like a Black Mirror vibe to it. Like, y'all like Black Mirror, Black Mirror on Netflix? Oh. That's like Twilight Zone on a new level. That's all. It, that, Anybody else find those episodes scary a little bit? Not, right, and, and not, not that it's, it's, it's like scary like Jason or Friday the 13th, but it's like, it's scary because it feels possible. Like we ain't that far from it, right? And I would say my, the, the, the episode that's still uh, so fresh for me is the very first one, right? The one with the pig? And just hearing the Prime Minister of England go, fucking Twitter. <laughs> I so love that, oh my God. I, uh, I will say I do, I have a Netflix ad addiction. Um, well, I have a password. Uh, yeah. And they just, it just dragged me in, it dragged me all in. Like when I, uh, when I, first, when I first started watching Netflix, I, I was not responsible at all. Like, the minute I got it, I binged all 10 seasons of Futurama. Yeah! Yo, that changes a girl. <laughs> like, I walk into rooms now like, good news, everyone. <laughs> God. Hashtag kill all humans. <laughs> Oh shoot, kill all humans. Yeah, Walking Dead fans? Walking Dead fans? Still? I had to let it go when Baseball Bat Dude showed up. That was, that was too much. Yeah, yeah, mm, that's he who must not be named. I'm not calling him out. I'm not saying that. No, it was, it was tough for me. But I did watch all the seasons prior, and I will tell you again, that show was instructive for me as well, but I didn't not necessarily like what it taught me about myself. Like watching The Walking Dead, I know I'm, I'm not gonna survive the zombie apocalypse. I'm probably gonna be that, that woman at the shopping mall with a bunch of bags going, oh my God, why is everybody screaming? Is there a sale? <laughs> oh my God, stop biting me. <laughs> it's not appropriate. 
we in public. <laughs> I also know from watching that show, man, I, I don't want to survive the zombie apocalypse. Right? No batteries, no electricity. I'm not doing this shit by hand, am I? <laughs> well, here's the, listen, let me explain. I'm woman enough to admit I'm not that good at it. Um, I tried. Uh, it took me six hours. I got carpal tunnel. <laughs> So I've come to understand that this is a job that should be outsourced. <laughs> Preferably to an immigrant, absolutely. They work hard, they don't complain, they get the job done. Uh, I am a sanctuary city. <laughs> oh, man. I do think, though, I do think they, uh, to me, one of the best shows on TV is, uh, is Game of Thrones, man. That is... For Winterfell, oh my God. I, uh, honestly, that show, because of that show, I, I, I don't mean to, I don't know if this is a brag or just mental illness. I wanted to start calling myself the Khaleesi of comedy. <laughs> Mother of punchlines. <laughs> and sort of arrive here on a dragon late because that's how you make an entrance. <laughs> oh my God, I love that show. I've read all the books. Didn't it, have you guys, are you read the books? Read the books? Okay, okay. I, uh, and actually, book, books is not the right term. Uh, these are weighty, epic tomes, <laughs> right? Like, I, uh, I started with the actual book, but then I, I was like, this is, this is too much. I downloaded it to my iPad, and they were still heavy. Like, what? <laughs> And I, here's the thing, when you finish reading a Game of Thrones book, doesn't it feel like an accomplishment? Like I felt like after that, like the last page, somebody should have presented me like with a PhD in a castle. <laughs> right, maybe a little patch of land in the north. You know, because the north remembers. <laughs> oh my God. Love that show so much. I, uh, George R. R. Martin is very, very talented. Actually, do you guys, does anybody here know what the RR stands for? No. Raymond Richard. Oh. Yes. And his mama was like, mm, you're going to get all the names. <laughs> I can't choose. <laughs> and you know, even when you were a kid and you got in trouble and your mom would call you by your whole name, yeah. that must have been exhausting for her. <laughs> George Raymond Richard Martin. Oh, never mind, boy, never mind. <laughs> Just go on to your room, keep writing, keep writing. That's what you do, I like it. <laughs> yeah. For me, he's right up there with, um, with Frank Herbert, um, author of Dune, Dune. Thanks. Wow, some of us in the room, and how can this be? For he is the Kwisatz Shadrach. <laughs> I told y'all, my geek runs deep. And I, uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, I've read those books as well. Um, his books and the prequels that his son wrote. Um, yeah, I don't get out much. I don't get out much. Um, but I, I particularly love the women, the female characters in his books. Like, I love the Bene Gesserit. Yes, yes. Um, the Litany Against Fear, I Must Not Fear, Fear is the Mind Killer. I wanted to get that tattooed on me, but I'm afraid of needles. So, yeah. That was the end of that idea. I, you know what, I guess, I guess if I'm going to mention good authors, I have to mention Stephen King, because he can go. <laughs> Stephen King can make anything scary, right? He's got, there's a whole generation of people afraid of clowns <laughs> because of Stephen King. <laughs> We're afraid of clowns, dogs, cats, going to the prom, <laughs> cars named Christine. <laughs> Like, dude, what is your issue? Oh my God. And I saw, I, I'm a sucker. I, I went, I went to see The Dark Tower. Oh, <sighs> yes, yeah, that's exactly why. And I, I am not gonna say that that was the worst movie ever 
because we all know that that was Cyborg with Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> but the Dark Tower is pretty damn close. And again, yes, the only reason why I went is for Idris. They bet they be lucky I love me some Idris. I lo listen, I loved him from um, when he was Slinger, Stinger, Stringer Bell in The Wire, okay? He, he's in Luther, and I'm really gonna love him when he's James Bond. Yeah. What? Yeah. Let me tell you, the day they make Idris Elba James Bond is the day that I embark on my international life of crime. <laughs> And I'm not gonna be subtle. I'm gonna be dropping clues everywhere. I'm gonna be like, MI5, come get this 10. Mm. What? <laughs> man, but the British know how to do it, man. They, that's, I get, that's why I'm a Harry Potter fan. I love Oh my God. So, okay, wait, I did, I, I know uh, I, I shouldn't acknowledge because, you know, they're very insecure. Um, Hey, hey, okay, no, I'm sorry. We have we're all four houses represented tonight? Yeah. Okay, okay. There we go, there we go. There we go. Why you gotta say it like that? That's why nobody wants to be hopeful, Pop. People doing the Pottermore test three, four, five times, oh, damn it. Still Hufflepuff. My Patronus is a bunny rabbit. What the fuck? <laughs> now I, I I know like everybody, well not everybody, but most a lot of people have seen the movies. But how many people read the books? <laughs> oh, I, you know what? You know what's weird? I just assumed everybody loved Harry Potter. They do not. I know, freaks. Oh yeah. Here's muggles, exactly. Well, here, here, I had, this is what happened to me. I was reading the first book, and this woman came up to me. She was really kind of intense. She got in my face. She was like, Harry Potter is a plot to corrupt children into believing in magic and worshiping the devil. I was like, mm, somebody needs to cut back on her caffeine. Because when I was a little kid, I didn't read Alice in Wonderland, think I was gonna fall down a rabbit hole, <laughs> meet an invisible talking cat, right? You don't get that from reading a book. You get that from dropping acid. <laughs> now, I look on the bright side. Few kids read Harry Potter, start worshiping the devil, at least they're reading. Because <laughs> I think the last thing we want is an illiterate disciple of Satan, don't you think? Scene. <laughs> oh, man. show you right. Mm. I'll tell you a quick story though. When I was uh, when I was in England, um, I, when I was there, I found out that the Mattel toy company uh, made a replica of the Nimbus 2000 broom. Ooh. Yes, yes, from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um, they had to recall it because it was a vibrating broom. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Girls were showing up to the prom, no date, just a broom. <laughs> Real problem, I think, were the parents, right? Kids like, mommy, where's my broom? Shut up, mommy's cleaning. <sighs> <laughs> 10 points for Gryffindor. <laughs> And that, my friends, is the true Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> oh, man. I, are you guys having fun? Are y'all enjoying yourselves? 
you know, I, I opened by saying that um, Dragon Con is, is special. And it is for me for a number of reasons. It always falls on my birthday weekend. Yes. I know they do that just for me. <laughs> but yeah, my, um, my birthday is Sunday. Um, woo! Oh my God, we're twins. And here's the thing, I, I love it now, but when I was a kid, I never used to like my birthday. Because all my birthday presents used to be back to school supplies. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to get a Scooby-Doo book bag for your 18th birthday? <laughs> Although I will say 18, 18 was actually my dad's favorite birthday for me. Because it meant he could curse in the house again. <laughs> First thing he said to me, Happy fucking birthday. <laughs> I was like, thanks, motherfucker. <laughs> and then I had to move out. Because <laughs> that's the circle of life right there. <laughs> it's weird, though, man. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually at that awkward age right now where police officers are starting to look really young. <laughs> yeah, like I saw one little cop the other day, I, I thought he was trick-or-treating. <laughs> I was like, hey, little boy, you want some candy? <laughs> I got arrested. <laughs> but I do, I do love it here. And I think, well, one of the other reasons why I love uh, coming to Dragon Con is because they invite me. <laughs> I mean, you want to go someplace where they want you. All right, and so I, I, I am very thankful and grateful to this track. The room that you're in is Skep Track. Please give them a round of applause. I am. Um... Skep Track has been amazing and wonderful and kind to me, bringing me in here to do the kind of stand-up that I love for people that appreciate it. And the, the tracks and the events that are going on in here are, are really uh, informative and, and, and mind-expanding, and I recommend them. And not just the panels I'm on, all of them um, are really good. Because it doesn't matter, like, you can be, you can be an atheist, you can be skeptic, you know. I, I oftentimes refer to myself as a humanist, which um, is hard, because human beings are a really hard species to love. So I guess that makes me more of a dogist. Because um, life is better with fur in it. Oh like I think the world would be a better place if we all treated each other half as good as we treated our pets. Right? I mean, I would be in heaven if someday somebody rubbed me on my tummy and said, who's the best girl in the whole world? <laughs> me. <laughs> I am an animal person, though. I, I really am. And I actually, I want a dog. Um, like I'm, I'm that person that'll go and, and talk to dogs and pet dogs on the street. And um, I saw this police dog. And you know you're not supposed to you know, pet them when they're working. So I walked up to the officer. I said, excuse me, sir, is your dog on duty? And he said, yes, ma'am, he is. But I'm not. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Are you good on the leash? <laughs> Cause that makes a difference. Oh my God. Yeah, but I, uh, it's wild. My friends know, you know, my friends know uh, that I'm an atheist and consequently they have never asked me to be um, godmother for their children, um, which is fine. Cause I don't believe in kids, so. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> We're good. Um, but I, I, I love that I can come here and, and be myself. Because um, it's, it, it, you know, in the outside world, it's really difficult to make jokes about religion. Because uh, everybody believes different things. Like, I have a friend, you guys, who believes in aliens. Right? Seriously, he's like, Leanne, you know, we don't, we don't really know who built the pyramids. So aliens must have done it. Like, dude, I don't know who put the shingles on the roof of my house. <laughs> Doesn't mean the Klingons did it. <laughs> but I, um, I will say this. 
uh, one of the beautiful things about Dragon Con is that everybody's here. You got sci-fi, you got fantasy, you got anime, you got <laughs> comic books, you got alternate history. We're all here. We're all making it work. And if we can do that here, maybe we can teach the world how to do it out there. But if you guys, I thank you so much uh, for coming out to my show. I, I hope it lived up to the advertising. I hope this was indeed nerdy as fuck. And I, uh, I invite you uh, to please, I'll be in the back. I have some friends of mine. We're handing out my my cards. I invite you to visit my website. It's veryfunnylady.com. And please understand, that's not a declaration. That's an aspiration. Okay. Because if you have enjoyed me tonight, then yes, I am very funny lady, Leanne Lord. If you have not enjoyed me tonight, my name is Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> You guys, thank you so much. I'll see you out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night. Folks, keep it going for Leanne Lord, please, one more time, nice and loud. Leanne, let's go over one more time. Nice and loud for Leanne Lord, please. Come by and say hi to us. Thank you guys for coming out. <laughs>